Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, thanks, Claudia, thanks, Brian, and also thanks to the University Hospital for having me here to have an opportunity to share our experience uh, doing work in this field with our colleagues here. And the example I'm going to talk about is a very special one because it is a very big comprehensive cancer center. So some of the things may apply in your setting, some may not, so keep that in mind. Uh, but um, I will just show what we have been doing and where we are heading and what worked and what has not worked. So Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center is uh, one of the oldest, actually the oldest private cancer center in the U.S. and also one of the largest. It has a uh, 15,000 employees and an annual budget of $3.3 .3 billion. So giant place spread out over different places in, in the island of Manhattan. This is the main campus, the breast center, the surgery center, the outpatient, and there are several other centers around. So it's a very big place. How can a small program of integrated medicine live there and grow and how do you plant the seed and make it grow and overcome some of the obstacles? Uh, these are the challenges we faced, and uh, I'll show you uh, the things we have done and, um, and the results. So this service was established in 1999 by, number one, patient demand, because if you look at all the service, 40 to 60 percent of cancer patients in the U.S., they are interested in this. And also, there are visionaries in the board of trustees of Sloan Kettering Cancer Center who see this as a part of high quality cancer care. We have to incorporate this and provide that, guide patients to get good treatment while avoiding the harmful ones. And they think this is very important in the overall care of the patient. So the service was established in 1999 and under the leadership of Dr. Barry Catholic, the service has grown over the decades, um, uh, over the last decades. So our overall mission is to incorporate evidence-based complementary therapies into patient-centered care to improve the lives of those affected by cancer. So you can see it's a very broad um, uh, definition. And the specific service we offer are those that has been studied and there's some evidence supporting their safety and potential benefit. Some of the evidence may be strong, some may not be so strong, but at least there are some evidence suggesting benefit or outweighed risk. So specifically, consultation by physicians first, and we offer nutritional counseling, mind-body therapy, acupuncture, massage therapy, music therapy, and physical activities like yoga, tai chi, and also fitness classes. I think these activities are shared by most integrated medicine services around the world uh, because they are supported by evidence. And here are the specific numbers. In, 19, uh, in 2014, uh, the number of clinical encounters, we, can, we had a total of about 22,000 clinical encounters. Uh, about uh, uh, 1,600 MD encounters. You can see acupuncture is a big part of our service. Fitness classes, Tai Chi, yoga, a lot of activity there. Massage therapy and uh, also some uh, music therapies. The services are provided both in the inpatient setting and the outpatient setting. And the practice models are different. Uh, the outpatients are fee for service because uh, a lot of time the insurance would not cover that. The inpatient service will provide free of charge to patients because the hospital covered that because uh, we, the hospital think this is important as an overall experience of cancer patients in their inpatient care. So the clinicians, in terms of the numbers, uh, we actually, uh, we are a very small service in the big institution. There are only two physicians now and we're recruiting three more because the demand outstrip our uh, ability to provide the service. We have a eight weeks waiting list for a new consultation to be seen by us. And, and we have lots of inpatient consultation we have to turn down because we're just short-staffed. And we don't have any nurse. And I, I know at MD Anderson, they also have mid-level providers, some nurse practitioners, and which will be very helpful. Um, but Sloan Kettering is a very tight place. We don't have enough real estate, you know, room to put people. So uh, Manhattan is a very crowded place. So that's uh, one of the obstacles we always have to deal with. And we have 12, 11 massage therapists, yoga and tai chi instructors, seven of them, four acupuncturists, full-time acupuncturists, that's all they do, acupuncture, and uh, movement-based therapies, you know, teachers, uh, instructors um, on fitness, certain breathing techniques, music therapies, uh, mind-body therapies, and uh, nutritionists. And when you look at the, where the patient come from, 95% of them are internal referrals. 
which tells us two things. One is we are well accepted by the oncology service around the hospital because they know when patients ask about this question or they have some s very refractive symptoms and that does not respond to conventional therapy, they will say, you go see integrated medicine. So most of our, our patients are referred internally. That shows we are well accepted and well entrenched in the institution. And also it shows us the support we get um, because over time we are able to build this trust and um, reputation. And I think that's a very important thing as, uh, uh, as uh, we just heard. You know, we need people like Claudia, someone with very solid scientific background, providing high quality clinical care to build this kind of uh, trust and relationships. And if you look at the referring service, most of them came from GI service, uh, stomach cancers, colon cancer, esophageal cancer. GU, of course, there are lots of prostate cancer patients there, right? And breast, so these are the big ones. And GYN, we see a lot of ovarian or uterine cancer. Lung cancer also. So each one of them have different needs. Uh, we don't, probably don't have time today to go into that. Maybe tomorrow we can talk about them. Uh, like the breast cancer, they're mainly breast cancer survivors. Uh, after treatment, they're done, they're free of disease. They want to live well to prevent or reduce the risk of recurrence. They want to eat right, they want to do the exercise, reduce stress, and so on. While thoracic, a lot of them are more advanced patients. They're more about symptom control, palliative care, uh, improving uh, or exploring alternative, different kind of uh, experimental therapies. So for each population, we tailor our service to their needs. And when you look at the specific cancer, the type of cancer, you can see breast is probably the most because for another reason is breast cancer patients in the United States, they are very proactive, politically very powerful, they lobby, um, you know, they have all kinds of campaign and they, they, they want to be actively involved in their care. So a lot of them are exploring complementary therapies. Prostate cancer, because uh, many of these patients are just <coughs> being watched, you know, a, a newly diagnosed cancer, you don't treat them, they are being watched, they said, well, that's not enough, I want to do more. I want to change my diet, I want to change my lifestyle. So we see a lot of them. So you can see, we see a lot of uh, also rare cancer because in this, this, pe this place, we, we actually do see a lot of these like small bowel cancer. You know, how often do you see that? But uh, uh, occasionally we'll see them as well. The, in the physician, the urinary patients are with the physician consultation service. In that service, we do a comprehensive assessment of the patient's health, but this is in the context of his or her psychosocial cultural environment. And then we formulate a comprehensive healthcare management plan and uh, we guide them in the use of herbs and supplements because this is one of the main reasons they got referred to us because they are exploring these herbs and supplements and the oncologist said, well, I don't know what they are, I don't know how they interact with other things, what they can do, what they cannot do, what harm they may cause. So you, you need to talk to the integrated medicine service. So uh, this is where we have very unique expertise in helping the patients. But I think most importantly, even though they come in with a question about herbs and supplements, we try to take the opportunity to inspire and empower them to make changes, take active part in their self-care because this is a teachable moment. The reason they are exploring these things tells us they want to do more. They want to do more self-care. They want to do things they can do at home. And we give them the tools so that they can have their psychological and physical needs taken care of. Then they wouldn't be too... Uh, uh, keen in exploring some of these uh, therapy that may not be helpful to them or may be toxic. The way we would present this is, you know, we, we told them we're not just doing acupuncture and herbs. What we're doing is to change the internal environment of your body so that cancer cells live in a hostile environment, not a friendly environment. Because in the last 10 years or so, if you look at the research in the past, all the chemo radiation attacked the cancer cells. But in the last five to 10 years, a lot of therapy was developed trying to change the microenvironment, the surrounding area like immune therapy, angiogenesis, you know, hormones effect, growth factors effect, or nutritional requirement of cancer cells. A lot of these new therapies have developed in those areas. That's the surrounding of the, the cancer cells. And that's the, where I think integrated medicine has a lot to offer to change that. So when we look, when we presented, we said cancer lives in your body, but it doesn't live in a vacuum. What's going on in your body? Influence cancer, and the body under the influence of the mind, and we all have spiritual needs, the family and friends, circles. 
cause a, a lot of um, uh, uh, influence the outcome and also the like, economic situation, the society environment. So what we're doing is we see you not just as a, cancer, a bunch of cancer cells, but in this whole environment. And that uh, make patients be more aware of and mindful the surroundings because a lot of them, I think the first most important seed we plant in patients' mind is the awareness and mindfulness. They need to know, they need to take care of their body, their mind, their spirits every day. And we try the way we say well, your body is like a tree. It has an intrinsic ab ability to heal itself. It's an organic being, not a car. We just replace a, a wheel, we replace a part. So when we present it this way, they're much more open and they're, uh, to what we define integrative medicine rather than, oh, I want to try this alternative herbs, hoping it can give me miracles. So we're trying to steer them away from that and give them comprehensive care. And one very big part is the nutritional counseling. And because we know whatever we eat creates this metabolic environment where every cell is under the influence of. And um, depending on their specific needs, we provide different things. It's a healthy eating habit for disease prevention and health maintenance. These are mainly for cancer survivors. And during treatment, a lot of them have poor appetite. They don't eat well. They, they don't digest well. We give them advice to improve, keep the weight because during cancer chemotherapy, if you lose weight, it's not a good thing. But a lot of them are uh, advanced patients, they're cachectic, we, we, we give them advice to gain weight. And most <coughs> cancer survivors are often overweight, especially breast cancer patients, they, they're postmenopausal, they're on hormone therapy, and we need to get them lose weight because overweight is a risk factor for recurrence and also the proper use of dietary supplements. Mind-body therapy is a big part of what we do, which uh, we're gonna hear a lot about, I'm not going to go into too much, uh, meditation mainly, for anxiety, stress, sleep, depression, pain, and the overall quality of life. Acupuncture, very, for usually done for specific symptoms. You know, if you look at the clinical trial data, meta-analysis, and systematic reviews, it supports the most evidence supports its use in pain management, nausea, vomiting. Some mixed results on treating dry mouth from radiation treatment, hot flushes from hormone therapies, anxiety, insomnia, and some peripheral or, or uh, 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 suggestive evidence suggesting they may help others. A lot of active research clinical trials are currently being done on these things. We have a clinical trial of acupuncture on lymphedema, on um, bone marrow transplant patients, uh, fatigue, and also for uh, neuropathy from cisplatin and uh, taxines. And massage therapy is usually used for a different kind of massage to reduce tension and pain. Uh, a lot of them are for post-op recovery. And music therapy is a big part, especially in palliative care, end of life care. Uh, we give people different, uh, either they listen or they play or they compose, uh, make them feel comfortable, not so lonely, induce relaxation and uh, get a sense of uh, uh, closure as well. Exercise and fitness we think is very important. Uh, it does change not only the weight, but also hormone levels, growth factor levels in the body, and that we think have an influence on how cancer cells behave. And so we, we have different classes. Some are just regular um, uh, routine maintenance class. Some are spe specific special exercise regimen to help people recover from treatment. Like you have thoracotomy, you have different ways to teach you how to breathe. And if you have mastectomy, we have to open up your shoulders and neck, and, and, and we, we even have a a boat racing, a uh, dragon boat racing program for breast cancer patients after mastectomy because they were, in the past they were told don't do anything with your arm but actually we, we asked them to race boat and they're very uh, feeling very empowered. Yoga Tai Chi is very popular, especially yoga is now so popular. Uh, the, the, the density of yoga studios almost matched that of a spark Starbucks uh, in, in, in New York, <laughs> right? Uh, so. Um, <laughs> And uh, last, uh, the uh, a very important area is the natural products, uh, dietary supplements, herbs. You know, they do contain a, lot, a rich source of therapeutics. So we are doing clinical trials, investing in botanical drug development, and also use the herbs for symptom management. And, but a lot of them works in the test tube, but works poorly in clinical trial setting because the bioavailability is poor, and how to improve that is our, our challenge and uh, they may interact with medications that we have to watch out for. Especially nowadays, there are a lot of target therapy, orally available target therapy. They're very sensitive to interaction with other drugs. And there are others that just, they, they promise miracles, but they cannot deliver, and we steer people away from those uh, hypes. 
And in addition, we made a website. It's called About Herbs. Uh, this is a summary of research data on 280 herbs and supplements that are asked about by cancer patients, or there's some research on that. We have a summary of literature. And you can search them. It's free. Uh, we have an app, so you can download it from the uh, Apple I, uh, App Store. It's called About Herbs. And you just key in the name of, let's say, ginseng or graviola or uh, poly MC, MVC, uh, MEA. So whatever you put in, they will show you all the data has been done. And we actually get more hits, uh, 1.5 million hit a year, more than the Sloan Kettering homepage, uh, which is a very popular website. Uh, with all these development over the last decades, I think the landscape has changed a lot uh, in the U.S. And in the past, we always question, oh, does acupuncture work, or you know, does massage therapy work, or symptom management control? I think we're way past that. You know, there are a lot of meta-analysis has been done summarizing these data. So much so that at the beginning of this year, 2015, the Joint Commission, Joint Commission is a very powerful organization in the United States because they inspect and approve the operation of the hospital. If you do not pass a joint commission's inspection, the hospital cannot operate. So they accredited the hospital. So usually they give these guidelines, they have these check boxes. They go in there and they look at what you do or don't do. If you don't meet that, they may, you may have to uh, uh, stop operating. So here they are saying actually, uh, here for the first time they said for pain management and non-pharmacological strategies like acu acupuncture, massage therapy, relaxation therapy, should be part of the, in addition to pharmacological management of the pain. So this now become a more like at the federal level uh, a, a stamp of uh, approval and um, both for symptom management, also for patient's experience. And in addition to that, there are many studies showing it improved the op hospital operation because now we are also, another area we are focusing on is not only re reduce symptoms and improve quality of life in patients, how we can help the hospital. Because once you can demonstrate that, you get a lot of support from the hospital, you get a lot of uh, financial support because you know, patients pay is sometimes not enough. Uh, so these are, this shows you know, it, you know, hypnosis can reduce the time patients spend uh, in the operation room. And which means a lot for a busy hospital like Stone Kettering because they can have more turnover, they can do more surgery, people don't have to wait for so long. And so in general, we, we do uh, the uh, integrated medicine we think can help the cancer care in many areas for patients. It reduces symptoms, it promotes self-care, enhance quality of life, and nurture the well-being of body, mind, and spirit. But most importantly, we want to spread the message. We want to spread health patients become ambassadors. You know, once they learn that, they convert, they teach their family members to eat right, they teach their kids to start living healthy at the very early stage. So we think they're ambassadors, we are training ambassadors for healthy lifestyle for family and friends. In addition to that, integrated medicine also helps the cancer care professionals. We are a part of the employee wellness program, so we give classes to help our employees, doctors and nurses and social workers and, and uh, even uh, physical plant or, or the, the people moving uh, food around, how to reduce stress and reduce injury and so that they become happier employees, happier uh, people, and then they can provide better care to cancer patients because medical profession is a high stress profession. A lot of them go through early burnout and that is not good. And by strengthening by making them a better more effective professionals you also strengthen their relationship with the patients and when they talk about these therapies patients appreciate that and really love that and then the, the end result is the overall care of the cancer patients is improved and how we incorporate that in the big hospital like that we do both horizontal incorporation integration and vertical ones so horizontal one means we work closely with palliative care cancer medicine, which are the people who are giving chemo and radiation and so on, survivorship program, employee health, and uh, psychiatry and so on. So we have joint research program with them or joint clinical program with them. By spreading our out and reaching out to different departments, we made ourselves more visible. They know what we're doing, they feel comfortable with what we're doing, and they actually have a taste of what we're doing, and that they are more on board and they, uh, they are more supportive. Vertical in integration means upon diagnosis, when the patients come into Sloan Kettering, they got a packet 
introducing some of the integrated medicine service we have available to them. Also, every clinic visit, they have to fill out the form of all the, not only the medication they're taking, but also the, all the herbs and supplements that they're taking, so we can check. And throughout the treatment, we try to reduce symptoms during recovery, we make them stronger and back on their feet to live a normal life. And not only we don't want them to not be sick, we also want them to be well, and better yet, try to make them into joyful, vitality state that they really fully enjoy their life. And some of the horizontal, example of horizontal uh, in, in integration is um, we are embedded in the regular care of cancer patients at Sloan Kettering because it's just become a flow, a regular workflow. So you don't have to think about it, and that's the best way to incorporate. So for example, the pre-op, we are working, there's a new surgical center being established. We are working with uh, some of the other services together to make a program, especially mind-body therapies, to prepare the patient for surgery. You know, give them a, like a one week, you know, different kind of stress reduction techniques. So when they go into surgery, they feel more relaxed, not so nervous and, and, uh, and fearful. And post-op recovery, we do this in the hospital. So try to get them out of bed faster, get them out of the hospital faster. And the ICU, we, we have we design certain guided imagery videos and try to orient patients to, to the date, the time of the day. Because the people in the ICU, they live in a room like this. It's always, there's no, they lost a sense of time and date. And they get disoriented, then the uh, delirium and the, you cannot extubate them. So when we do this, we work with the ICU team to do this early mobility um, program. Uh, it's an information technology iPad-based program to help reduce disorientation and agitation. Uh, when people are waiting for chemo, they wait a long time, like two hours, because they have the lab draw and they have to wait for the results. They're just sitting there feeling nervous of the upcoming chemo. Uh, we also develop an a, 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 a iPad app showing them how to do acupressure to reduce nausea and how to do guided imagery to reduce anxiety. And then we give them these things, tools to take while in the chemo suite. So they use this time productively. Instead of reading magazines and newspapers, they actually learn some self-care skills. And this is actually also funded, uh, this program is funded by the hospital or the, the supported by the hospital. Employee wellness, again, do more, uh, first of all, we make people more aware of the service we provide, the integrated medicine. We also make them feel better, prevent burnout, and make them fitter and uh, become more productive uh, uh, people. Operating room, uh, a lot of surgeons, they operate for hours in a very awkward position. Uh, a lot of them develop cervical neck problem, um, back pain, and so on, because they are operating like this for a long time. We develop some yoga-inspired exercise program to help them stretch and relax and teach them how to uh, assume correct postures when they're operating. A lot of them, you know, during their surgical training, they were never trained on how to take care of themselves. They're trained to take care of the patients. So we give them a belated uh, training on taking care of themselves. And in MRI, you know, people are lots of people are claustrophobic. So we, uh, we, we have people wearing these goggles, you can play movies, pictures, and music on that, and we take them to a different place, more pleasant place, so uh, they are less agitated, they move less, and the flow on the MRI machine is faster, and the people are more pleasant, and the, the workers uh, in the MRI suit would appreciate that as well. So all these are embedded into the regular operation of the hospital, and that makes it very, uh, uh, demonstrate that we have some value and, uh, to the hospital operation. In the palliative care, we have also our therapists embedded with the palliative care uh, team. We round with them and identify patients who are most likely to benefit from certain special kind of therapy. And we just started the pa uh, pediatric palliative care uh, rounds as well. Music legacy program that we're uh, we uh, developing is to use, um, to develop a playlist of music that are very meaningful for a particular patient, like a landmark or milestone in their lives. When they play this music, they're back to the, uh, the time, their happiest time. And then that will, uh, especially for end of life patients, that form some kind of closure and, and uh, comfort. And there are many other uh, programs, I'm just gonna skip it quickly for the sake of time, that we try to embed. So uh, how much time do I have left? About Two minutes, okay. Um, how do we promote the integrated medicine program? I think for this conference is more relevant because uh, we're talking about lots of practical things, right? How, we, how, to, how to share ideas and what work, what may not work. Um, uh, the, for patients, uh, we rely a lot on word of mouth because the oncology, they're so busy doing a lot of 
their therapies, you know, integrative medicine don't really always surface on their mind. So usually the patients, they talk to each other. They have support groups. They talk in the waiting room. And then when they see their oncology, they will say, oh, what about integrative medicine? Or what about that? What are the things I can try? Or what should I eat? How can I uh, eat healthy? And then once the patients mention this question, it brings up the thoughts of integrative medicine in the oncologist's mind. Because if they don't mention, they have so many things going on. So then they say, oh, go see these integrative medicine people. So that's word of mouth is very important for us. And brochure is scattered all over the place in the hospital, in the waiting area, in the uh, patient welcome package. And every clinic, clinic, they have little TV screen showing all the programs available offered by Sloan Kettering. And we are, some of our programs are shown there. You know, they have these rotating screens. And on the website, there are many texts and video content about herbs draw a lot of attention. and. Um, and the traffic, and also name recognition. So a lot of people, we ask them, well, how do you know about us? We say, well, we did a search of some herbs. I saw you guys have this website. And then we, we learned you actually have this service. So we want to be part of could get some help there. And lectures, and seminars, and so on. Uh, so they, we made a lot of free videotapes on our website as well. So this is an example of the touch therapy for caregivers. We not only give people massage therapy, we teach husbands and wives and give massage to each other, especially uh, to, to the patients. You know, this is a very good bonding process and also uh, it reduces some of the tension and anxiety. And these are free videos you can watch. Um, and not only to patients, but also to healthcare professionals, I think to promote it among our colleagues, the most important things, the thing that works the best is patient positive feedback. You know, if, a con uh, if an oncologist have a lot of patients, quite a few, come back and say, oh, I saw these people, it really helped me, I feel so much better. Or they have this neuropathy they have been dealing with for a long time, no progress. They come to hear us, they got some acupuncture, they got some, we call it marble therapy, and some massage, and they got better. And that actually registered in their mind. Then next time they see a similar patient, they'll say, oh, maybe I should send them to them. So positive cancer, uh, uh, positive patient feedback is a number one uh, reason, I think, so Whatever we do when we are practicing integrative medicine, we always keep that in mind. You have to make people feel better and do better. And our MD also practice in the same area as oncologists. There are a lot of collaboration both in clinical research and also in, uh, uh, in, in research project and also clinical project. Social workers are very good ally for us because a lot of patients, they have problems, they talk to social workers and we're part of employee wellness and so on. Um, so I'll skip that. So towards the end, this is the, our service. You know, these are very dedicated, passionate people, and we're fortunate to have them. And, but uh, it takes a lot of hard work, and also over the years, a lot of obstacles to be overcome. And, uh, but I'd like to also recognize and thank them for their hard work. Thank you very much.